All right, folks, today we're going to do some do-it-yourself uh, fishing sinkers. Uh, we go through a lot of sinkers. We fish a lot. We're running low. I want to go over the things that you need to make sinkers the way that we make sinkers. Uh, there's different ways to do it, but but this is what we got. So most importantly, you're going to need a lead source. These are just old, poorly molded egg sinkers, uh, some mold bank sinkers, some no rolls. There's a pyramid sinker. Uh, we prefer inline lead sinkers. We have our own reasons for that, but we're not a big fan of sinker slides and all the extra stuff hanging on the line. We've had some bad luck with that. So we like egg sinkers. That's what kind of mold we have. So your second most important uh, parts to this is you need a source to melt your lead. This is a hot pot too, I think is what it's called. I'll throw a picture up on it. We have a... Uh, a do it egg sinker mold that goes from one to five ounces so these now I know what you're thinking why would you spend all this money instead of just going and buying sinkers but these two pieces here together tax and all run you about 120 bucks at Cabela's I'll throw a picture up here of a package of no roll sinkers which lead sinkers or lead sinkers are the same price that's just what I found but it's seven dollars and fifty cents for three three ounce sinkers so for one three ounce sinker one of these if you lose it, it's two dollars and fifty cents so if you fish a lot and you lose a lot of sinkers especially fish if you fish in the river like we do some this is going to pay for itself very quickly plus you can still get uh, if you shop around do your homework you can still get scrap lead you can use any kind of lead it don't matter if it has dirt uh, these metal pieces on it whatever I'll show you it all separates when you melt it you can still find that stuff Sarge found I think at his house I think we've got like 30 pounds of, of scrap lead that we can use that we got for for pennies on the dollar so like I said, most important parts you got lead, you got a melting source, you got a mold. This piece here is probably optional if you don't have this, but I'll show you, I'll show you what we're going to use, and I'll show you what it's all for as we go. But I've got a uh, map torch, side cutters, pliers, spoon, file. Got a metal container here. Got the uh, sinker mold and the uh, pen that goes with it you'll see what it's for later melting pot safety glasses now this is no match for hot lead but if a drop of sweat or water were to hit this when it's melted and it's spattered by the time it flies through the air tries to make its way through these glasses it's going to save your eye have some kind of eye protection and this is a must some heat resistant gloves preferably some long ones like these welding gloves and i've got another metal source here that i'll drop the finished sinkers on just to keep uh keep them from burning in anything i just flip this tub upside down because the inside's dirty but i'll drop these on top of here there's enough lip to keep them from rolling off and then you need to be in a area that's got ventilations you can see i'm outside here just outside my garage door um also, I've got my extension cord ran out here to plug my pot up. And if you notice, I've got it hung up in a fashion that the dog can't run over it, the kids can't run through it. Because what would happen then is you def the last thing you want is for someone to drag this hot molten lead off and it get on your kids, on yourself, on your pet, whatever. So I've got everything up in a safe manner so uh, it can't get knocked off. So I'm going to plug this pot up. It don't have a on and off switch. You just plug it up and it's on. You can see I already have some residual lead in there from uh, from the uh, last time we used it. So I'm just going to plug it up, let it heat up. It takes, I don't know, 10 minutes maybe. Let it get this melted and then we'll add some more to it. And we'll come back and see you then. Another thing I forgot to mention is a uh, lubrication source for this pen. This pen is what's responsible for uh, maintaining the hole through your sinker that your line slides in. So uh, I actually feel like this is optional. I've used 
I've done this with and without it, but any kind of lubrication, WD-40, motor oil, just whatever, I've just kind of wiped it on this paper towel. That way I can lube this up just a little bit to make sure it don't stick inside the sinkers. All right, now you can see the pot's hot enough that it's melted the uh, lead that was already in there. So now I'm gonna use these pliers here to add some more of these pieces. And the reason I use the pliers is because for one thing, it's hard to pick anything up with these gloves. And uh, you don't want to be doing this without the gloves because if that splashes up on you, that's going to that's gonna hurt. Plus, you don't want to get that molten lead on your gloves. So we'll just keep adding pieces here. Now, like I said, I'll show you here. Here's a weight that's got a little metal, a little brass fastener on it. Just put it all in there. All right, once everything's melted good, you take a spoon or some kind of a, just anything to dip out your impurities. You wanna skim the stuff off the top. You can't see it, but that little brass rings in that pile there. So now, this is the part where the torch comes in optional. If you don't have some kind of a heat source to preheat this mold, you can just set it up here. We're gonna do, let's see, we'll do the big ones first. We'll do the threes, fours, and fives first. So what you can do is you can just lay this on there for, I don't know, 10 minutes or so and let that preheat. Because if you see these little holes that you have to pour the lead through, if this if this mold is cool starting out, then it could uh, bridge over in those holes and you won't get a good pour. Once you start pouring leads, it stays hot enough, but initially it may be too cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the camera over here and uh, put my other glove on and we'll go ahead and preheat this mold. Put a little lube on the pin here. And we're going to stick it in from the top side here. And that's what will form the hole. We're going to do the threes, fours, and fives right now. Now the quicker, the quicker that you can safely pour this, the better, uh, the better quality your sinker is going to be. If you pour it really slow, then it's going to layer because this lead will set up really quick once it cools. It will set up way faster than it uh, melted. So you want to pour as quickly as possible, that way you get a good smooth sinker. Give it just a couple seconds. Twist that pin. Pull it out. Open it up. There you go. So I'll take these pliers and kind of knock them out.
close this up. I'm not going to put any lubricant on it this time. I don't think it's necessary every time. I'm going to try to pour these a little quicker. I don't think I have enough for another one, so we'll stop there. Now we'll add some more. Each time you add more lead and it gets melted, you want to clean it off again. You can see here all those little, all those other metal pieces all float to the top. You scoop those off the top. Scoop all the junk you can off. Now I've had this laying on there. But since I have this, I'm going to use it to make sure it's good and hot. Put my pan in. If the little uh, tip breaks off, you can't get them out, just use your pin. You see, the quicker we go, the better they look. This first batch I poured, I'm going to remelt those and re pour them. Not that it's a big deal, but you can see how they're just not real pretty. Not that it matters. But uh, that's where it was poured a little bit too slow, and you can see how it just kind of layered in there. But If you're going to keep the sinker, like we are these, if they're extremely hot, you take a pair of side cutters and just cut this off. We'll just do a couple of them here. Cut this piece off. Then, of course, you can reuse those. Then you can take your file file that rough edge down and there you go, three ounce egg sinker. <clears throat> Another really handy thing about having your own uh, sinker making equipment is that let's say you don't have a whole lot of lead and uh, you're fishing a a uh, flooded river that needs is, that needs five ounces of weight in order to keep your bait on the bottom. But next week you're going to fish a reservoir with no current, where you just need one to two ounces of weight. You can take those five five ounce sinkers, melt them down, make a bunch of one or two ounce sinkers, and just reuse them. You can melt this stuff as many times as you want to, uh, whatever size you need that week. Just just make them until you get more lead. All right, I'm gonna finish pouring the rest of these up. I'm gonna turn the camera off. Go ahead and try to get this done. 
I hope this helps somebody out. Uh, like I said, this stuff, yeah, maybe it be, may be a little expensive up front, but if you do fish a lot, and especially if you fish river systems and you lose a lot of sinkers, with the way the economy is right now and the expense of fishing equipment, these two pieces can pay for themselves quickly. And if you get lucky and run up on hundreds of pounds of lead somewhere, which is very possible, then uh, you could sell some sinkers and then make your money back. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, if you're not subscribed, please do so. Uh, leave us a comment, hit the little bell button so you get notified when we make more videos. And we'll see you on the next one.